Hello and welcome to Startup Champions 2.0, the show where you meet and learn from national startup award winning founders. In the show today, you will learn from two startup champions from the travel industry. They are Willowtail and Urshelo. Before we meet our startup champions today, from the entire team at Startup Champions 2.0, I wish everyone watching this show happy Makar Sankranti. May you stay healthy, get infinite positive energy, and build incredibly successful startups in 2023. Let's now get started with our episode today. You don't get five-star hotel luxury, no grand buffets, but you get rotis made of healthy hand-grounded flour, vegetables freshly procured from the farm. What better than that? If travel for you is about living the life of locals and experiencing it the local way, our startup champions have heard your wishes and they will make them come true. They are your genie. Let's now see the Willowtail story. See, Willowtail, as the name suggests, that uh, it's, it's about village tourism, like village culture, village stories, village lifestyle. So we are promoting the village culture, lifestyle, the way of living to a visiting customer, visiting guest, visiting tourist. Today's traveler, the millennials, there is a lot of gap between what uh, they know about the nature. Like if you ask somebody going, going to a city that where do you get your eggs from or where do you get your milk from, the answer is we get it from a, a big bazaar or maybe a you know retail shop. Hardly anybody would know that you know it's coming from cows, it's coming from a uh, poultry farm. So we are trying to fill in that gap. Tourism can be a extension of economic activities by empowering local community. So then it came to our uh, uh, mind that, you know, let's do something by engaging local community with us. So when we engage local community, empower local community, this lot of hospitality in village actually has got a lot of heart in it. We are working along with the village community and with this, we are also solving a problem of migration. All the village communities are our, our extended team or extended family members. So that is how this entire concept has evolved. So Shaman and Shuddha, welcome to Startup Champions Studio. Thank you. Thank you. My first question to the both of you is, uh, look, what exactly led to you guys creating Willowtail? Well, uh, as you rightly said that village is, it's about local culture and local tourism and everybody wants to travel. So we are trying to solve a couple of problems, you know, wherein uh, people traveling to far off places, there is very little choice. Today, you know that revenge tourism, because of that, there is traffic jam in Masuri, there is traffic jam in Manali. So we de develop destinations which are close to your place, uh, not very difficult to reach. And there you get local food, fresh air, a lot of oxygen there. So all these things will get at Willowtail. Along with that, you get a lot of stories, the experiences, the rural and cultural experiences to get. So this started, uh, so many the traveler. While he was traveling, you know, in, in Uttarakhand, he found out that there is a gap. Okay. Right. Uh, if you go to offbeat locations, there is a gap. I mean, you don't get that kind of service. Right. And I'm from hospitality background. So we are classmates. So, <laughs> you know, we discussed it and over a cup of coffee and we came up with this idea. That wow. So as they say, a lot can happen over coffee. You want to add something to that? Yeah. So basically what we did was like, you know, we handled it, the homestay owners and, you know, uh, like we, we are developing the clusters uh, for uh, the uh, uh, travelers so so basically when we are you know working with clusters so we have homestay owners we have uh, like you know local people who are sure. like guides farmers and all to create an rich enrich uh, experience for the guests how the velotail experience is different from uh, you know any other experience so for example let's say when when i go and travel anywhere i go to a certain website book my hotel uh, there and, um, and and my experience is there so how is velotail so different from what i usually experience so basically, you know, when you are uh, like uh, from any web portal, you are uh, booking the uh, your trip. So it is usually it is uh, like your hotel right. and transport and few uh, say uh, experiences. Sure. Uh, but what we uh, but popular experiences. Sure. So what we do is we are working on the village experiences. So village experiences like you know. Uh, so like uh, driving a tractor, I mean you might have driven a BMW but how many of uh, them have driven a tractor right. or plowing the field or you know climbing up the trees and plucking fruits and you know uh, having it over there right. or uh, something like you know hand picking your egg that you want to have in your breakfast. Sure. So these kind of experiences uh, that we are offering as a willow tail we believe every village has a tail. Nice. So we are, we are bringing out the tales through experiences, 
Now these villages have lots of tales, like right from the uh, like you know mystical, mystic, uh, historical. Uh, so so there are so many tales. So we we are telling these tales through these experiences. This is fantastic. In fact, I personally love your idea because uh, look, all of us love to travel. I actually love to travel myself at a lot of places, and um, uh, you know we all have our own family backgrounds. You know I come from a family of teachers and people in the armed forces. So um, every place where I go, people from my family actually tell me you know that. Uh, that there is a certain tale to that place, right? Kurukshetra has a tale of its own, Chandigarh has a tale of its own, and so on and so forth. So fantastic. Uh, how do you actually curate these tales? Um, because I'm sure, you know, when you would be working with locals there, look, you are from the hospitality industry, locals are not from the hospitality industry, right? Cool. So how do you train them? So basically, uh, like lots of efforts of Ghosh, Shuddha in, in it. So basically, we, we uh, go to their, uh, them, basically we reach out to them, we visit their places, we, we find out like what are the possible experiences that we can create out of that place. And then we curate them, we handhold them, we train them how to, you know, right from greeting uh, the guests to like what should be the welcome drink, what, what local uh, drink we can offer, to the experiences, menu, everything that we handhold and we curate. So my next question to the both of you is your business model. How do you make money? Well, uh, it's a very simple business model. Uh, the difficult part is to identify villages and you know curate packages and design itineraries which are interesting to the visiting tourists. And then of course uh, we make money by you know uh, 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 adding our uh, uh, markup on the on revenue the, on, on sharing. The revenue sharing. It's, it's a revenue sharing model. Uh, uh, that that we are working on and there are a few things you know not just that we are selling rooms and experiences we are also planning to do uh, sell the local producers in our homestays right so that will give a direct uh, uh, revenue additional revenue to the village people basically it helps uh, both the customers guests and the local people because they could sell uh, the local producers to the people uh, which can add to their revenue the guests they get local producers like uh, the local rajma or local rice or something like that so they get pure purest form in the in the purest form this is actually get. fantastic in fact uh, at a lot of places where we go and travel for example when we go to jammu you know people actually say that get rajma from there you know i remember once i visited rishikesh and i literally got an entire plant from there which was planted there of course um, you know on the permission of the property owner so what's the economic opportunity that you guys have created for your hosts well uh, see uh, uh, you know uh, there are 600000 villages in india uh, we are trying to a small bit to get uh, you know uh, uh, the, the additional revenue so that it flows down to the villages and also when we create these kind of experiences see selling my own village is not a difficult task right right people coming to my villages we always welcome our uh, you know relatives come to we serve them food we be hospitable so when people come and stay in the villages that gives opportunity to the local youth sure. to earn uh, you know to uh, uh, showcase his skills sell the uh, place talk about the local uh, you know the sightseeing places of the place uh, of that particular area and uh, on and get engaged in this activity along with that people say that when one traveler comes to a uh, place 13 another uh, at least 13 people gets additional revenue sure. so that 13 people in terms of somebody you know selling a grocery somebody providing a bike bicycle somebody providing a car somebody providing a room the homestay you know the ladies of the homes uh, uh, village right. cooking food for them so the entire uh, uh, places gets benefited along with that when we said that they buy the local producers directly like somebody going right. to Chakrata, Chakrata ke Rajma, sure. they buy it. So that again, the money is flowing down into the sure. village economy. So that is the uh, the so benefit that you're getting. Fascinating, you know, you've actually created an entire village economy. Uh, my last question to the both of you is: uh, Look, millions of Indians are watching you right now on StartupChampions.co, right? Uh, for the first time, probably they would have heard about Willow Tail. Now they want to be entrepreneurs like you. They also want to create local experiences and do a lot more for their villages. What's your message for all of them? We welcome them all, and please get connected with Willow Tail so that we jointly, collaboratively, we can create a good ecosystem for guests and for the host. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for your answers. The top two lessons of this session are number one, travel is an experience. And if that experience is authentic and local, it will leave a lasting impact on you and your family as well. So travel local. There is a large business opportunity in curating offbeat and new experiences for people.
Remember this as an entrepreneur. Post COVID, travel has opened up and this is the right time to bounce back with the right set of curated experiences if you want to be a travel entrepreneur. Learn from, of course, our startup champions. Where else do you need to go? Life for us is incredibly easy, but imagine the Jawan guarding our borders. Imagine he or she is trained to take a bullet to save the nation. Now ask yourself, how can we make life simpler for all of them? To know how, meet me on the other side of this break. Welcome back to Startup Champions 2.0. How can you make life simpler for our soldiers? Most of us staying easy in cities can never feel what it takes to give up everything in your life, only one life for your country. Our soldiers do it all the time. It's our time now to do it for them. This is exactly what our startup champions have done. They are making life simpler for our soldiers. They have built something that they call the super app for soldiers. Let's now see the Urchello story. We are into the business of making life simpler for our soldiers. Every day, almost 40,000 army people are traveling by Indian railways. Most of them on an unconfirmed ticket. Whereas at the same time, similar number of airline tickets going vacant. At Urchulo, we help these soldiers to take an airline ticket at the cost of railways and help them fly back their home safe. This is the first problem that we picked, but anything that makes their life simpler, we do that now. Starting from filing income tax, helping them getting the items which are not available in canteen, even getting a home, because getting a home is also one of the tedious tasks and when you are always posted at far-flung place. The situation that happened around 2019, when a lot of transactions hadn't been done with one of the sterling carriers of that time, Jet Airways, and suddenly around April, Jet Airways shut down shop. We realized that passengers, while they had purchased Jet Airways tickets, had bought these tickets through us, putting their trust and money with us. And we realized that we need to uh, ensure that these people are not let loose just because they have bought tickets on Jet Airways. So we ensured that we gave back all the money to them. It was 5 crore rupees worth of refunds being done and a decision was taken that we are not going to treat them just as customers, they are part of our family and, and they need to be ensured that their hard-earned money is not lost. So Avni and Deep, welcome to Startup Champions to Nado. Thank you. My first question to the both of you, in fact, let me first congratulate the both of you. I think the problem that you're solving and who you are solving it for is not just a company, it's a mission. Yeah. True. Phenomenal stuff. So how did the idea of Urchalo actually come across? So typically speaking, around 10 years back, uh, if you were to talk to our founder, our CEO, um, you had 45,000, more than 45,000 waitlisted tickets on trains by our soldiers. Right. At the same time, you had empty seats by airlines. Now, if we could solve both the problems put together. Why? Because it's not that the waitlisted uh, soldiers would finally get seats. They would be, um, you know, traveling outside washrooms on old soil newspapers. And here there were airlines who were not able to sell their seats. Right. So if you could marry both these problems together, it would be a win-win-win situation. Right. So the win for the soldier win for the airline and win for us because we are here to make life simpler sure. for our soldiers. Fantastic. So, you want to add something to that? Yeah, I would like to add uh, something on deep because, see, the travel was the kind of uh, little stuff, but the promoters, as Deep has mentioned, is the son of the army veterans himself. So, he has seen over a period of time how, he's just, uh, uh, how the father was struggling while traveling because most of the time, the Fauzis get the sanction of their leave on the very last moment sure and you know the condition of indian railways where getting the last moment reservation is very very difficult the idea came that uh, uh, from a young uh, ait graduate that served the community back because from where he belongs to and then he started that what he could do and therefore the the first th possible thing was the travel because why travel because it it connects everybody sure everybody goes to, to sure. their family so, so let's let's yeah. actually now understand it from uh, from your product itself right you said travel you said experiences why don't you actually show to all of our um, our viewers what exactly is Urchalo really like so of course sir. of course so thank you let me show you the super app for our soldiers uh, you know you can open and you can see the plenty of services and products we offer to them 
and you can see the flights here, uh, trains, buses, cabs, uh, hotels, uh, U-tax, which is our uh, a very um, new addition to our services to file their income tax return. Uh, we have recently launched our housing project exclusively for our uh, soldier friends, um, you know, in Pune. So if you, so, if you are choosing anything like, for example, if you will choosing uh, say housing, for example, so how you will see the projects listed uh, there, you know, and it is it will provide you the details like what kind of. Uh, real estate property we are selling, what kind of facilities are there and also that what kind of price you will get. Generally the price is uh, discounted price exclusively for our soldier friends so that they can buy free free uh, without any uh, uh, fear factor that it is. And one of the why we have started is we are very interesting to know because most of our soldiers are placed at the borders, right? They don't have leaves, they don't have luxury to visit the various projects and identify for them. So there is a trust factor also comes into picture. And who are the better person, a better company for them to, to support that and give that confidence that the offer what we are giving it to you is actually best deal for you. So let's actually fundamentally build upon the trust now. Uh, my second question to the both of you is what's your business model? How do you make money? Earning money is our secondary thought. The first thought always comes to our mind is the service to our soldier friends and the family. Now, uh, so what we are trying to do, we are trying to the, uh, reach to the various suppliers, be it is airlines or the housing or the hotels and tell them that you are serving to the community which are saving us and that's why we are here, right? So generally, uh, they also respect that feeling and that's therefore true. they give very exclusive prices to those community. So we are able to secure the best prices which are good for them and then and they are also getting it at the best of the market price. So in that process we charge some convenience fee so that they don't mind it because they are getting the cheaper anyway sure. and the suppliers also feels proud that they are serving and giving back to the community because of them we are feeling very secure in India. So one important question on strategy, right? Uh, you have built your business upon and for a certain niche, correct? Right? It's a very limited or a very defined audience really. Is that strategy or is that emotion? Um, it's purely emotional strategy if I can use that word, right? Um, so I'm not here to you know tell you that how this is a niche and it's much smaller sure. and it's you know that one's you know the others may be much more bigger. But finally we've got a very very large segment of soldiers and their families. So when we say soldiers, when we say Jawans, when we say Fauji's, those terms interchangeably, uh, we're not talking about soldiers, only the ones those who are serving. It's those who are serving, those who are retired. So it's Fauji family complete, right? Sure. So it's the entire family. And that's a big number. Sure. It's, it's not as small as some people consider it, but it's a very big number. And like, you know, I'll just continue with what you're saying was that we have eight curated services and um, we are a super app for soldiers, we have a great platform. Um, most of our vendors, whom we call as partners, are people who also want to serve soldiers, right? So if I am somebody who goes ahead and, you know, claims that I can give you a 15% discount or more than 15% discount on housing, it's because my partner wants to help and wants to serve soldiers as much as I want to, sure. right? So we are here largely because we represent our partners and we represent our soldiers, so it's all of them put together. Got it, fantastic. Uh, you know, I, I love that emotional strategy actually. So, uh, you know, how did you fund the business on day one? And in the course of the past about almost 10 years now, have you raised external funding? This company totally bootstrapped. So we have not taken any external funding fantastic. as of now, neither debt nor equity. However, for, to give the better services and to, uh, to reach to the mass of the market because what we are doing, we are serving 3 million people as of now, but we have miles to go. We have sure. 30 million people to serve and then 30 million people has to be leveraged to be offered multiple products. So the size become multiple. So if we are s s selling one product uh, to 30 million, say 30 million, but if you are selling eight products, it become even higher numbers. Right. So to get on that speed, we certainly uh, looking for uh, some external funds now because uh, uh, the, our internal accruals are not in 
as enough as it should be to support the growing Got company. Got so it. Fantastic. I'm sure a lot of investors will be watching you on Startup Champions Toronto and who knows you might just get a check sure. as well. On that note, my last question to the both of you. Millions of Indians are watching you right now on Startup Champions Toronto. What's your message to all of them? You want to work with 4Gs, want to work along with, with us, reach out to us. We are here to create a platform because making life simpler for our soldiers I cannot do it alone, you can't do it alone. It's all of us put together. Come together and we can make this a much better country. Phenomenal, so come together and we can make life easier for all of our 4Gs. The top two lessons of the session are number one, profitable businesses can be built for small or niche communities too. They've actually done that. Number two, customers will pay for convenience and a frictionless experience. If you really understand what Urchalo has done is exactly just that. Discuss less, decide a lot more and action the most. That's what you need to do. It's time for a break. Up next will be questions from our audience and step number 23 of how to start a startup. I will see you on the other side. Welcome back to Startup Champions 2.0. It's now time for your questions and answers from our Startup Champions. Uh, our audience actually asked some very amazing questions. Are you guys ready? Yeah. All right, great. So please come on screen and ask your first question. I am Avinash from Lucknow. My question is from Willowton. At how many places are you present in today? So basically, we are across in, uh, 10 uh, uh, states across 26 destinations with around uh, 65 plus homestays on board. And uh, that is in various places in uh, India. And uh, we are focusing on four clusters in Uttarakhand as of now. Uh, where you can uh, experience a lot of uh, village experiences as we discussed. Fantastic. Great. Uh, thanks for your answer though. Uh, the second question, please come on screen and ask your question. Hi, I'm Gaurav from Noida and my question is how big is your operation? In uh, any service industry or service company, the operation is the biggest uh, team. So um, our around 30% of our uh, total team size in the operation and take care of all the verticals of our business. Um, that's it. So around 30% I can say to be and, precise. And, and how large is your team? So total? my team is around 250 people, uh, including the technology, sure. um, you know, sales and marketing, accounts, finance, and all the other department which is required to run a successful business like sure. me. All right, on that note now, learning leads to earning. You all know this. Let's continue our journey of learning with step number 23 of how to start a startup. Focus on the core at scale. Listen to me very carefully. Focus on the core at scale. You are now scaling your business. You need to now focus only on your core. Several startups, they fail simply because they start focusing too much on the non-core parts of the business. Example, let's say that you are an edtech company. Your core hence is your education, of course. But you start a call center to drive sales and then you establish a recovery team to recover payments from your customers. You should ideally outsource both of these operations to trusted partners. Remember, focus on the core of your business. All right, what did you learn from today's episode? Share your feedback with us, make your videos and post them on social media with hashtag Startup Champions 2. In the next episode, you will meet our Startup Champions from the drinking water and energy industry. Thank you for watching Startup Champions 2.0. Jai Hind. A device that captures information, but we make this easily usable through a mobile app that we have. We got, the first thing we need to do is, is reduce the demand for water, mm -hmm. fresh water, right? While there are new technologies which could be working on creating more right. fresh water. Control the uh, room heater to turn it on and off uh, by clicking the screen. Mm -hmm. uh, you can do it from anywhere in the world because it's connected using Wi-Fi. So once you replace them with a smart BLDC fan, which is a brushless DC motor fan, it'll save about 1500 rupees yearly for you on that as well.